Hello everyone, I am the Bennett Kirby and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite magic gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander from Duskmorn, Arabella, Abandoned Doll. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel and works it costs you. But the very best way you can help us out the channel is with my Patreon. There are plenty of perks for being a patron such as early access to certain videos, exclusive deck text, gifts, and more for as little as $1. You can also become a channel member for just $0.99. Cents. Show off your support with a logo next to your name and exclusive emojis. Or you can always just support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Arabella is a 1-3 toy artifact creature for 1 red and 1 right. Whenever it attacks, you deal X damage to all opponents and gain X life, where X is the number of creatures you control with power 2 or less. I loved this card when it was first previewed and it screamed mass 1-1 one, one tokens to me. Not only that, but it also screamed for those tokens to be goblins. Well, mostly goblins. Why goblins? Because those are the easiest tokens to create in mass. The deck does do other things, but you're probably here to see how I'm amassing these goblin tokens to make the most of Arabella's trigger. First off, the goblin token creators that I was most interested in were those that created them upon entering the battlefield. To that end, I included Beetleback Chief, Goblin Gang Leader, Red Cap Gutter Dweller, and Siege Gang Commander. These create 1-1 tokens upon entering the battlefield, which is crucial for how the deck performs. However, I'll get to that in a moment. For now, our goblin counter is already by 4, thanks to these. Next up is Siege Gang Lieutenant. It creates the goblins before attack if we control their commander. This might seem slow, but if we have other effects in play that care about goblins, weak creatures, tokens entering, etc., then it does a lot of work here. But we'll see those effects soon enough. Last but not least is Krenko Goblin Boss. He creates an exponential amount of goblin tokens and is crucial for every aspect of the deck's main strategy. We can either overwhelm the board with goblins, feed into the pain effects, or create a ton of one-powered bodies to kill the table with Arabella. Definitely an all-star here. However, for now, he ups the goblin counter to 6. This is the critical number of goblins we want. What do I mean by this? Simple. Muxus Goblin Grandy. When he enters the battlefield, we reveal the top 6 cards from my library. All goblins with mana value less than 6 revealed this way go straight to the battlefield. If we revealed those previously shown goblins, then we create an insane amount of goblin tokens right off the bat. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can we ensure the stack our library with these 6 goblins? Another simple question to answer. Goblin Recruiter. Once we have this and 6 mana to cast Muxus, we essentially get our main strategy in play in one fell swoop. When it enters the battlefield, we look for Muxus and the 6 previously shown goblins and stack them all atop our library with Muxus as the top one. That way, when we start our next turn we draw into Muxus, then cast it to get the rest of the goblins in tow for free afterwards. If this seems like magical Christmas land, the deck is also running Goblin Matron, Imperial Recruiter, and Recruit of the Guard. I don't usually play with tutors, but these are all just copies of Goblin Recruiter. This makes it 4 times as likely for us to assemble that Muxus avalanche of goblins mentioned earlier. Even then, the previously mentioned goblins are still good on their own since they create bodies for Arabella. But when cheating in at once with Muxus, it's such a satisfying and epic feeling. When figuring out how to further synergize this goblin strategy, I considered taking advantage of white to blink them in mass. That way, they can create even more goblin tokens when entering the battlefield. Another round, Eerie Interlude, Semester's End, and Nahiri's Resolve do so much work here. Another round is so epic providing a potential win con when combined with other effects in the deck that we'll see in a bit. In any case, being able to blink our token creating goblins multiple times in a single turn before entering combat can potentially kill off the table with Arabella's attack trigger. The middle two can do the same, but only once and at instant speed. However, these spells can also be used to protect our board. Granted, they're moot for our tokens, but we can always just rebuild when those creatures re-enter. But the fact that they can perform two functions at once in the deck makes them absolutely amazing for it. Nahiri's Resolve is amazing because it gives a plus one pump to our creature's power, which will still have Arabella count them. If all of our tokens are one power, they'll now be two power, which is still good for her trigger. If that weren't enough, our creatures also have haste, which Krenko loves. And not only Krenko, but if we created a ton of creature tokens that same turn. But wait, there's more. We can also exile any number of non-token artifacts and our creatures we control until the beginning of our next upkeep. This means that we can not only re-trigger those enter the battlefield triggers, but we can also protect our non-token artifacts and creatures from sorcery speed board wipes. If we don't plan to block with them, we can store them safely in exile for later. This is definitely one of the best cards here. These blink effects aren't just good for token creation but winning as well. 
Again, Instigator, Impact Tremors, and Perforous God of the Forge are included in the deck to make even more use out of our tokens. Creating tons of tokens will deal even more tiny cuts to the table. So, combined with Arabella triggering multiple times, we can end games relatively quickly. Speaking of, Perforous also has an amazing mana sink. So if we needed those finishing touches, we can also swing in with all of our tokens. After Arabella triggers, we can then pump our attacker's power by one as many times as we can in response to combat damage in order to deal some serious damage. Speaking of dealing some serious damage, City on Fire also loves that we're creating so many tokens. While this spell costs a whopping 8 mana to cast, it's essentially free thanks to Convoke. And even if not free, then for a significant discount. Not only does this make those previously shown pain effects much more dangerous, but Arabella as well, since she'll deal thrice as much damage with each trigger. On top of that, our token army will also deal thrice as much combat damage. This enchantment is amazing here. Having mentioned triggering Arabella multiple times, now's as good a time as any to talk about Strionic Resonator and Lithoform Engine. For just 2 and tapping, we can double Arabella's attack trigger. That alone makes them worth including. However, with so many other triggered effects in the deck, they can be used even if we're not attacking with Arabella, especially Lithoform Engine since it can also copy Krenko's activated ability. We can also copy spells but that requires a hefty amount of mana and the deck wants to keep a low enough curve. It is non-green after all. Delny Streetwise Lookout also doubles Arabella's attract trigger. Not only that, but she'll also double a Gate Instigator and each other Weenie's triggers too. We're going to see plenty more throughout the video, so just remember Delny when we do. If that weren't enough, she also gives our weenies the potential of being unblockable, especially Arabella, since she needs to attack to get that sweet game ending trigger. So she fills two roles here. Same with Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. Not only is she a panharmonicon for us, but a torpor orb for opponents. Granted, the deck doesn't have a ton of enter the battlefield triggers, but there's more than enough to warrant running her here. And at worst, she'll stop opponents' own enter the battlefield triggers. If you've played it commander enough, you'll know that these types of triggers are a player's favorite kind. So she'll do a ton of work here, whether for us or against opponents. Now that we saw the main gimmick of the deck, naturally there are way more cards in here that create weenie tokens. We can't just rely on that near dozen amount of goblins. To that end, the deck is running Dwarven Mine, Fountain Port, Kirkkeep, and Sokensen Crucible of Defiance, which are amazing since they don't take up slots due to being lands. However, Sokensen is more than likely an instant than a land, so don't keep it around if you miss your land drop. The mine has the added bonus of being fetched for, so once we have enough mountains to trigger it, we can use the appropriate fetch land to get a free 1-1 token. Like the goblins, Posphorus Partnership creates 1-1s when it enters the battlefield. However, this is used more for mana acceleration than anything, since we can tap down 3 creatures to create a treasure token. This is amazing at the beginning of the end step before our turn, in order to make a ton of treasures to set up future turns. I absolutely love this card. Grand Crescendo, Secure the Waste, and Cycling Decree of Justice gives us X tokens at instant speed, while Snake Basket does so at sorcery speed, but in another turn if we so chose. I love the basket because we can just leave it there for when we run out of steam, or for when we have enough mana to sink into it and kill the table with the pain effects, or to create enough tokens to attack with Arabella and win before blockers are even chosen. The Crescendo has the added bonus of also making our board indestructible, making it another amazing card here since it fulfills two functions. The deck is still running Boros Charm, Flawless Maneuver, Teferi's Protection, Clever Concealment, and Gallifrey Falls no more to protect our token army. We can't just rely on Grand Crescendo. Fortunately, there are plenty of mass phasing out effects to protect our tokens from wraths that aren't just about destroying the board. Returning to tokens, Assemble the Legion is another amazing card that's great for when we've run out of steam or when creatures are blown up. Enchantments are still the card type hardest to get rid of. If this sticks around long enough, it'll make those long games become shorter the longer they go on, if that makes sense. Darien King of Keldor is one of the highest mana value cards in the deck, but he does so much work here. If we control Arabella, opponents will be wary about swinging into us, especially if they don't kill us, because then we'll get that many 1-1 soldiers which can then fuel Arabella, hitting the entire table for that amount, possibly even more. He does so much work here that lands like Ancient Tomb and Battlefield Forge are even better with him. With him in play, the damage we take from these will give us more soldiers. He's so good here even with his hefty mana value. Maze of Ith, Access Tunnel, Rogue's Passage, Prowler's Helm, and Whisper So Cloak are more ways to swing in with Arabella to get her trigger without risking her death and blocks. Keep in mind that while the Tunnel and Passage don't take up slots in the deck, Maze of Ith does since it does not tap for mana, so do not count it here as a land slot. In any case, not only can we use it to remove Arabella from combat, but we can leave it up against any Voltron commanders or huge beaters on the battlefield. 
the equipment making her essentially unblockable are also helpful, especially the cloak since it also grants Shroud protecting Arabella in more ways than one. Fortunately, it only costs 2 mana to cast the first time, so we don't really need to invest that much time and effort nor card slots in protecting our commander. Mirror Entity can maximize how much damage Arabella can do for just 1 mana. We can turn all of our creatures into 1 ones. Likewise, if we're attempting to finish off the table, we can Alpha Strike with our 1 ones to trigger Arabella too, but then sink all our mana into X in order to make our creatures much larger in response to combat damage. Last but not least is Grafted Exoskeleton. It makes it so we need only to control 9 more weak creatures in order to kill off the entire table. This is plenty viable thanks to all of the token creating effects in the deck. Sure, it's cool to create a ton of creatures and win that way, but against faster decks, this helps us steal the victory away from faster opponents. While White Red is slowly but surely getting more card advantage effects, some still have things left to be desired. That being said, the synergistic ones work amazingly here. Skull Clamp is especially amazing at turning extra tokens into card advantage, especially when we've run out of steam. Definitely an all-star card here. Adol of Oblivion, Staff of the Storyteller, and Benny Brack, Zoologist, also care about tokens. We won't be outdrawing green decks anytime soon, but beggars can be choosers. These are especially amazing when we're able to create at least a token each turn. Same with Enduring Innocence, Rumor Gatherer, and Welcoming Vampire. Unfortunately, we can essentially only draw one card per turn with these, but if we're able to create tokens during our opponent's turns, we can draw more cards with them that way. At least, Rumor Gatherer will always scry one regardless. Metro of the Meek is the best among these though, even if you do have to pay one generic each time. At least we're able to do this indefinitely. Hopefully soon, Inspiring Commander gets printed in paper just like Goblin Gang Party was in Mystery Booster 2. Fingers crossed it's in a Commander Precon or some other product to make it widely available. But I digress. War Room is the last card advantage piece in the deck being an auto-include since it'll only cost 2 life to draw the card and Arabella gains us a ton of life anyways. Plus, it doesn't take up a slot in the deck. The deck's interaction is also synergistic, but in this case, it's better than it is. The Battle of Bywater, Expel the Interlopers, Fell the Mighty, Osir Command, and the Dusk Part of Dusk to Dawn are the deck's board wipes. These are the best board wipes for the deck since you can essentially keep your army of cheap and or low-powered creatures while taking out your opponent's bigger threats. You can also combine these with the previously mentioned Mirror Entity to ensure our creatures survive. As a nice bonus, Dawn lets you recover some weaker creatures too once it's in the graveyard. The deck is still running non-synergistic interaction, like Tobol's Trickery for counter magic, Chaos Warp, Generous Gift, Stroke of Midnight, and Witch Enchanter for single target removal, plus Guffrey Wright's History and Unexplained Absence for multiple single target removal. Of note is Witch Enchanter since it doesn't take up a slot on the deck for being an MDFC land, so long as you're not greedy and play it as a land when you need to. As for mana acceleration, Red-White decks don't have as good a time as green decks, but it can still make do with Wayfarer's Bobble, Burnish Heart, Canoptic Wraith, and Navigation Orb for land-based ramp. Curiously, we can attack with Arabella before sacrificing these creatures, since they'll help add to how much she drains the table, since they have 2 power. Speaking of, Bitterthorn Mrs. Animus is also in here. The germ becomes a 1-1 with it equipped, which also goes great with Arabella. Since the deck is quite aggressive, hopefully we can get a basic land each combat step with it. Soul Ring is also here, surprising no one. The deck's curve is pretty low, but Soul Ring will always help out, especially with commander attacks. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 7 fetch lands, Alpine Meadow, Elegant Parlor, Sacred Foundry, Sacred Peaks, Clifftop Retreat, Spectator Seating, Sundown Pass, and Command Tower, as well as 5 of each basic land for all the basic land ramp effects in the deck. As with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget. Whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Arabella Abandoned Doll. This commander is great because it's not like every other red-white commander out there. Sure, you're prized for attacking, but the build around for it is very unique. It also isn't cookie cutter. There are so many different ways to build it. When I first started adding cards to a list, I had over 150 cards in it, including all of the lands, before I whittled it down to the 100 needed to test it. I'm quite happy with how my version turned out, but I'm interested in knowing how you would build it. So let me know in the comments. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. I also want to thank any channel members. Your membership is greatly appreciated. And for everyone else, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Bandit Kirby, and happy brewing!